Call the meeting of the Board of Supervisors to order. Roll call Miss Stefan. Leyland. Here. Little. Here. White. Schwartz. Here. Trucka. Here. Now we will have a moment of silence to reflect on actions. And if everybody would rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Motion to approve the agenda. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Public comments? Do we have anybody for public comments? We have no one. Years of Service Award. We have one award today for Susie Manross for uh, 20 years from the Assessor's Office. I don't see her here. Okay, do we have anybody present to take the award? Congratulations to her on her years of service. Claims and payments. Uh, check total came out to $112,313.10. Uh, it's pretty low, relatively speaking. Uh, everything looked normal. Uh, the biggest uh, item on there was uh, the sheriff's office for 52837 But again, everything else looked normal. So. Okay, so we have a resolution that the Board of Supervisors approve expenditures and that the county auditor be authorized and directed to issue checks Move. again. Second. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Roll call. Aye. Roll, call. Roll, call. Oh, roll call. Roll call vote. Mr. Little? Yes. Ms. Leyland? Yes. Mr. Schwartz? Yes. Mr. Troca? Yes. Now to receive project updates from department heads and elected officials. Kathy? Good morning, Board. Good morning. Kathy Good morning. Can I have the TV on <laughs> for a brief few minutes? Uh, the paved road system is in good condition. Kathy Nicholas, County Engineer. Uh, the paved road system is in good condition this morning, as well as the gravel road condition. We're, we're seeing uh, very good conditions out there right now with slow thawing on the gravel road system, which is wonderful, much better than last year. Uh, hopefully it stays that way, that the rain you know comes in moderation this spring and we'll be in good shape. I just wanted to show you a few <coughs> photos from out at the uh, Cedar Wapsie Bridge project. These were taken last Friday morning. Uh, work is continuing on the bridge project. PCI is making good progress now on the pier construction in the, uh, the middle of the river. Uh, last Friday, we had invited some Hawkeye Community College, some civil engineering technology construction students to come out and see what was going on. There was a concrete pour uh, at the pier going to be taking place a little bit later that morning. And I just put in a few photos to uh, show you. Currently, the Hawkeye class has approximately uh, 20 students in the first year. And here's Mike Kinchy, our uh, one of our technicians, showing them uh, the pile driving apparatus and explaining to them uh, what's going to be going on that with that activity. And then here's Ryan. Uh, showing the students why it's important that we're monitoring the internal temperature of the piers the concrete uh, temperature of the piers. And it was cold that morning, so they only stuck around for about an hour, but we uh, definitely invited them back to see more when the weather warms up, uh, the beam setting and the concrete deck construction, for example. So that's it for my update. Can I answer any questions? Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. <clears throat> Good morning, board. Good morning. Mm -hmm. I'm Jennifer Fisa, I'm here to update you all on coronavirus. Um, so the Iowa Department of Public Health is updating the information um, on their website Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday. Um, information is coming to us rapidly, so bear with us as we push down um, the information also to our local partners, and I'll continue to update the Board of Supervisors and the Board of Health. Um, the Iowa Department of Public Health, um, they're working closely with the local health departments um, to implement screening and monitoring guidelines for um, coronavirus for travelers returning from mainland China. 
and um, travelers um, returning from any um, other um, the new virus is also called COVID-19, um, affected areas, in particular areas with um, level two or three um, CDC travel advisory um, should self-isolate and remain home for 14 days to monitor for symptoms such as a fever, cough, and shortness of breath. So this doesn't take into account like layovers. And so those right now um, are, are not considered um, being in, in an affected area. So affected um, countries are South Korea, Iran, Italy, and Japan. Um, again, um, with spring break coming, I, I, I highly urge the public to review their um, travel plans to make sure it's not in areas where um, it's, um, it, it's affected by corona. Um, healthcare providers now um, with the state um, that we can do testing for coronavirus. So um, they're conducting screening at patient check-in to identify potential cases and they're coordinating with um, Iowa Department of Public Health to assess the risk and arrange for testing. Um, right now for Iowa, we are low. We remain, the risk remains um, very low um, and also um, people do not need to wear masks. Um, that's one of the things that we're dealing with, the just, just shortness of supplies because everybody's buying masks. Um, what else? Um, the um, health department is working um, closely with our local partners, the business community, child care centers, um, universities. So we're pushing down as much information as the faster we get it, we, we do our best. We've set up um, internally um, a system where we can um, receive calls and, and rapidly answer to people's questions. Um, for department heads here, um, please do feel free to um, reach out to us if you have any questions in regards to staff traveling um, or concerns. Thank you. Anyway, yeah. Do you have all the tools and resources at this point to Yes, at this point, we, yes, you can be more, more proactive. Yes, at this point we do. Um, and um, we're we have preparedness plans in particular. Okay. Um, those are things that we um, have updated um, this um, at the beginning of this year. So we're, re we're ready. Um, and also, I just want to remind everybody it's still um, flu season. Um, it's widespread in Iowa. And so um, a lot of times people might confuse it with Corona, but they need to really um, go and get their flu vaccines and also um, just take the preventative measures of um, of uh, being at home, staying at home when one is sick and covering their coughs. And really one of the things that we're pushing is the washing the hands. People are substituting it with hand sanitizers, but it's it's washing your hands with um, warm water and soap that's um, known to be pre more preventative. So it's never too late to get your flu shot. <laughs> never too late, never too late. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other department heads or elected officials have an update? We'll move on to approval of the minutes from the February 25th meeting. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Number seven is the consent agenda. A motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. All those in favor, say aye. Uh, uh, roll, call. roll call vote. <clears throat> Ms. Leyland? Yes. Mr. Little? Yes. Mr. Schwartz? Yes. Mr. Troca? Yes. Contracts and agreements, uh, resolution that the lowest responsive bid received from Aspro Incorporated Waterloo, Iowa, letting held February 18th, 2020 at 10 a.m. for STBG-SWAP-C007, in parentheses, 159-FG-07 and FM-C007, in parentheses, 160 dash dash five five dash. Motion to approve. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we can skip word. <laughs> Kathy? Yes. Uh, so these are this is our two large paving projects this construction season. We have tied them together in an attempt to uh, get larger, more quantity to try and get more bidders. So these were let by the Iowa DOT uh, several weeks ago. We did just have the one bidder, Aspro Incorporated, here from Waterloo. Uh, the prices are a bit higher than they were last year, uh, a little bit higher than what we had budgeted for even, but we will we'll find the money in our FM account, for example. 
part of this money we are receiving is federal funding from the uh, MPO here, the local metropolitan planning organization, $900,000, and the rest of it will be FM money and local money. So I would ask that you approve this contract and uh, proceed with getting the contracts done. Any other questions? I didn't catch all that. Could you repeat that? <laughs> Roll call vote, please. Mr. Little? Yes. Ms. Leyland? Yes. Mr. Schwartz? Yes. Mr. Troca? Yes. Item 8B, a resolution that the lowest responsible bid received from Taylor Construction Incorporated, New Vienna, Iowa, letting held February 18, 2020 at 10 a.m. for project BROS-SWAP-C007, in parentheses 157, dash 5E-07 for bridge replacement of King Road Bridge. So moved. Second. <coughs> Kathy? Yeah, this was also led at the DOT the same day, February 18th. Uh, we got a good number of bidders. We had four bidders that morning. The DOT received those bids. Taylor Construction it was the low bidder. We had budgeted $380,000 for this project. This is what is the swap of money, so it's federal money, but the state is giving it to us as state money so that we don't have to have uh, Davis-Bacon or prevailing wages, et cetera, on the project. So they did come under under our engineer's estimate at $328,000. I would recommend that you approve this. We've worked with Taylor quite a bit off and on over the years. They do a nice job of uh, bridge construction. Okay, roll call vote. Ms. Leyland? Yes. Mr. Little? Yes. Mr. Schwartz? Yes. Mr. Troca? Yes. 8C, resolution that the lowest responsive bid received from Aspro Incorporated of Waterloo, Iowa, letting held February 25, 2020 at 9.05 a.m. for Project L-1704-73-074 HMA resurfacing on Spring Creek Road. So moved. Second. Kathy? So as you called, this was one of the bids that we opened here in the the courtroom or the room here yet last week <laughs> we just did just have the one bidder Aspro incorporated it is over our engineers estimate and it's also slightly over our budgeted amount we had budgeted nine hundred thousand uh, dollars we will make up the difference uh, out of our local construction money so they were the loan bidder we need to get the project done so I would recommend that you accept this <clears throat> Any other questions? Roll call vote. Ms. Leyland? Yes. Mr. Little? Yes. Mr. Schwartz? Yes. Mr. Troca? Yes. 8D, a resolution that the lowest responsive bid received from Heartland Asphalt Incorporated of Mason City, Iowa, letting held February 25th, 2020 at 9.07 a.m. for project L-2006-73-07 for HMA resurfacing on Pioneer Drive and Union Circle. Second. Kathy? So this was uh, the second project we did open in this room last week. Uh, to our surprise, we had two bidders. We have never received a bid from Heartland Asphalt before, but they were in fact a low bid by about $350. So I'm recommending that uh, you, you take their Bid. We've never worked with them, but they're, they do work all over Northeast Iowa, and we're looking forward to uh, beginning a working relationship with them. Are they in the area, Kathy? That's they're, why you at it. So they're in the Mason City area. Yeah, I understand what I mean. They must have a project around here or so. They could have. We haven't really discussed. We haven't really talked to them yet. Uh, we're not supposed to talk to them yet until you've accepted the bid. Okay. So I don't really know. Roll call vote. Mr. Little. Yes. Ms. Leyland. Yes. Mr. Schwartz. Yes. Mr. Troca. Yes. Other business, 9A, a motion that the personnel requisition for the office specialist full-time in the Veterans Affair Office be approved as recommended. Move. Second. This is a back bill. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. A motion that the personnel requisition request for an equipment operator, number two full-time replacement, effective April 27th, 20th, 2020. So moved. Second. Kathy? So we do have a long-time motor grader 
operator who will be retiring April 24th. We already know several people are most likely interested in moving up in the union, so we're sure that this will be backfilled and then we'll probably be coming back to you to fill an equipment operator one position, the entry level position. Uh, if we start now, we're hoping that we can ha have a person in place by the, the April 27th date. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. A motion that the personnel motion that the personal requisition for equipment operator one full-time replacement effective February 23rd second Kathy yeah this is another backfill due to <clears throat> an equipment operator 1b who retired and then the, that person a different person took that position now we're backfilling with an entry-level equipment operator one position so I'd ask that you approve this please right, we have a motion and a second all those in favor say aye aye Opposed, same sign. 9D, a motion that the travel request submitted by Catherine Nichols, County Engineer, be approved and direct the chair to sign the same. So moved. Second. Kathy? Yeah, so this uh, would cover the National Association of County Engineers, the annual meeting. It's being held in uh, near Gulf Shores this in April. I'd like to attend. I am now the secretary of the Iowa County Engineers Association. And I think it's in our interest to show that just to network with other county engineers, find out what the newest advances are. And Golf Shores in April, temperatures yeah. 75, 80, yes. limited humidity. Mm -hmm. There are no fools. That's all possible. <laughs> yeah. all right. Should we be have, nice. That's right. We, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you. 9E, a motion to direct the county auditor to advertise for a public hearing to be held at 9.07 a.m. on Tuesday, March 17, 2020, in boardroom 201 of the Black Hawk County Courthouse, 316 East 5th Street, Waterloo, Iowa, on the proposed ordinance number 77-238 from a request submitted by Richard and Mary Ketman. Second. Does anybody have any input upon this? Just to advertise right at this point. All right. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Right. Opposed, same sign. 9F, a motion to direct the county auditor to advertise for a public hearing to be held at 9.09 a.m. on Tuesday, March 17, 2020, in boardroom 201 to Blackmoon. Second. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Item 9G, discussion and possible board action in regard to the discussion of road embargoes as recommended by Catherine Nichols, County Engineer. Kathy, why aren't you running this meeting? <laughs> <coughs> Ryan Brennan, Assistant County Engineer. Morning. Um, it's typical, you know, typical a lot of springs that we do embargo a few of our seal coat roads. Um, typically, it's been one or two roads that we embargo every spring just to protect that pavement from deterioration, from keeping some of the heavier loads off of it. They tend to be embargoed around 10 tons. Um, the Iowa Code allows us to do that for up to 90 days in a calendar year. Um, with this last spring, there was a few other um, seal coat roads that we did embargo as well. They're ones that we haven't embargoed um, in the past, and that, that did cause some challenges for us and some challenges for residents. Um, there are some services that are needed on those roads. There is some businesses that need to have some access. Um, with embargoing the roads to protect the road, we didn't really have um, a formal process in place to actually allow them to travel over that embargoed road, whether it be limited use, certain number of trips, um, maybe reduced weight from what they would normally be hauling. Um, one way of accomplishing that and one way that's allowed in the code would essentially be to issue a permit for them to travel over the embargoed road. Um, they would still tend to be above the embargoed limit, but it would at least allow us to have some discussion with them on may, may, you know, maybe they are looking at reducing the weight to, to limit the impact or they're limiting the number of trips. Um, you know, maybe they're traveling you know, when it's still colder and we still have some frost in the road and you know, we try and make some accommodations where we can still um, protect our infrastructure while not limiting them too much in operating their business, their farm, whatever that may be. 
Um, so it's a process we've looked into. Um, we've kind of put a draft permit together. Um, there are several other counties that do issue permits for embargoed roadways. So we kind of looked at their process as well as far as what they have for permits to try and be consistent with that. How many roads are you looking at this year? Uh, this year, all we did, I mean, well, this, this last year we embargoed four. Okay. Um, I don't know what we would do this year. It's really going to depend on how the conditions are and how frost and, and moisture are for the rest of the spring. So it's something where we may embargo some. And, and we may not, just depending on the conditions each year. If you're going to embargo a road, are you going to not you notify the people that live on the road, the schools, the fire, and everything? Yeah, yeah. And this last year, we were coordinating with schools to still get you know school buses down, or coordinating school bus stops or business. Gar yeah, or garbage whatever. is always a very difficult one to handle, and that's something we had to to work through this last year as well. So. So you're not looking for approval today. You're just looking to say that you may be bringing it to a board in a future date. I guess that's up to you guys and what you'd like to do. I mean, we have a permit that we've started. The sooner we have a process in place, I think is beneficial from our end. Um, one of the big things I, you know, to, to figure out with this, some counties do charge for a permit. Some counties don't charge for the permit. Um, we feel that a nominal fee is at least, you know, it, it makes sense to us in some ways just for the time that goes into the permits that we have to handle uh, if we have to monitor some of that traffic I mean it at least helps us kind yeah, of but we're somewhat putting a hardship on some of the yeah. residents businesses and so forth so yeah I mean any I other... don't know if I necessarily agree with a fee for the permit how, yeah. how long would it be for 90 days 90 days is the length of the embargo I mean the permit length could be you know very very short or it could be a longer permit length too it just depends on longer than 90 well, the, the permit itself wouldn't be good for longer than 90. It okay. would be good for that period at most. It how could, it could be good for a week. Working. It just depends on how we... I guess, how do you see the process working, Ryan? I mean, it, it would be very similar to any of our oversized or overweight permits. Those are permits that we get in every day. They're available online. People fill them out, email them in. We review the permits and email the permits back to them. People can come into the office and fill them out. So whether you did it with or without a cost, it would yeah, still be I mean, permitting I mean, process. Yeah, right now, any of our oversized overweight permits that do have a fee, um, that's just tracked in our office and billed monthly to the people that get the permits. I, I don't have a problem with it. I wouldn't want to sit here today and vote on a blanket open, you know. Um, I don't know how you're going to do it, if you're going to do it individually all the time or do it in groups. But I think that'd be more appropriate to bring it to the board each time uh, I'm not saying one every time, mm -hmm. but I'm I mean, it, yeah, it's one of those where we would look at the specific load sure. each time they fill out the permit and kind of you know look and see if I mean if if we feel that that load can make it down the road without causing excessive damage. And, and basically, we're relying on your um, yep. expertise in the engineer's office. It's just that you know we're the ones up here probably have to deal with the um, residents or businesses or so forth. So. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I think if that's what you want to do, I don't have any trouble as long as we bring it to the board and, and we notify the people and the different agencies. Do you intend to come back to us, I guess, with a proposal, like a final? I'm thinking basically like from violation standpoint and that type of thing. Violations like actually um, written in the code. There's actually a, I think it's $2 per hundred weight okay. over, over the posted roadway load that can be charged as a fine so as far as the fines that's already in the Iowa code and I know because of the season you're probably assuming soon you might need this if this were to be something yeah I mean it, again it's one of those things where we'll just keep track of the roads as and it all they are the, how the roads are going to be too we don't have yep. any idea how they're going to turn out compared to last year so yep. it, it may be a process we implement and use very little this year yeah um, but it's nice to have it in place in case it's needed so it could be used in the future years, yeah. Have you done the permit thing in the past? We've never issued a permit for a posted road in the past. Again, we issue permits for um, any oversized overweight travel. You know, pretty routinely we get those permits in and out every day. You do issue em embargoes. How do those usually, I was going to say, how are those received from some of the residents, obviously, because <clears throat> that does create hardship. I mean, I think last year <clears throat> overall, it, I mean, I, we, we had a few complaints that came in our office from it, but for the most part, we were able to work through it with the residents. There was some people that, um, you know, maybe had a trailer with some construction equipment that they had to leave at a different site 
they, they couldn't get it in and out of their house every day. Um, there was some um, farms that were trying to haul some grain with tractor trailer, you know, semis. Um, <clears throat> and we tried to work with them to make some accommodations where they could haul certain times of day that, you know, wouldn't affect the roadway as much if they hauled during, you know, the heat of the day at two, three in the afternoon. So, I mean, we, we worked through it last year. There wasn't really process that we could follow. We kind of had to take it individual by individual and try and work through the issues with them. And I'm assuming every road's different too, so Can circumstances be, yes. are going to be different. So I don't have a problem if you just work with the board. So in case we field any phone calls. So, so do you want like authorization from us to proceed with this and put a process into place to bring back to the board, or how best does this work for you? I guess since the time since spring's coming. Yeah, I guess how do you? I mean, if we don't have a well, you have the authority already to, to embargo because the road, you've yes. done that already. I mean, the yeah. board does. So really, are you just talking about a permit process, which you're asking the board, or? Yes. Because you embargo anyway. You did last year, and you're going to this year. We, we bring that, when we want to embargo a road, we bring that to you. You formally approve it. You'll put up a sign. Now we're probably going to put up a sign that says except by permit or unless mm. by permit or something you can exceed the 10 ton limit unless or if you have a permit, for example. Mm. We would then send letters to the residents, to the businesses that we think will be impacted. Of course, that's not going to catch everyone. If we don't catch them, they will see the sign. Hopefully they're reading our sign and they'll know that they're not supposed to be on that road if they, they're over 10 tons, but they should call our office, and talk to us about a permit. And Ryan can talk to them and give them further details about uh, when they can use the road, if that's possible, for these 90 days. Sometimes the embargoes come off in 60 days. It's just hard to know, as you know. But we would like to have, be able to work, to have a, a permit process finalized, if we can charge a fee or not, and we can move forward then. We have talked it over with Pete, and he did some research into the code. And other counties have it, you say? Yeah, there's at least half a dozen other that we could at least find permits for online for the embargoes. Yep, for embargoes. Okay. And Pete, with your review, you saw no problem with it as far as something. That no, you know, I, d I do see a bit of a problem developing here with uh, getting the board's approval each time, and uh, that's something that, of course, you need to decide whether or not you want to do that, but. Uh, Boy, uh, 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 an embargo situation like we had this past spring, that's all you guys will be doing is uh, granting permits. So you may want to take a, a look at that. Uh, I think that um, it would probably be better if there was a more specific plan presented to you. And uh, so I, I, I think what you're doing today, as the agenda indicates, you're discussing this. And then a specific plan could come back to you and you've indicated that you don't want to charge a fee or maybe you do want to charge a fee well you sh you could discuss that in developing that plan mm -hmm. so you're saying any embargo on a road doesn't come to the board of supervisors be big pardon no embargo of the road has to be approved by the board of supervisors well yes every every year you do that you you embargo so i've seen individual line items we don't have to do that um I don't think the code requires you to grant these exceptions uh, and whether or not you wish to have uh, a voice in that is something you should decide and I think sometimes we've done it after the fact you've I think posted and, told, and advised us that you were doing it but then we've kind of come back and mentioned it at a board meeting yes last last spring was probably a good example of that where vehicles were just getting stuck in the steel coated road and tow trucks had to get them out for example and so we went out immediately and posted the road and then came back to you and said, we need to get this on the next agenda. <clears throat> and we're still proposing that we're going to have you approve every single road embargo. Even if it's an emergency, we'll be here the next, you know, within the next week mm -hmm. to, I, to have your approval. I think what Pete suggested is probably appropriate is put together. I mean, you know, you don't make it complicated lengthy. Just put together a um, procedure that, that you want to follow including the permit and blah 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 and give it to the board for approval 
Now, I want I, I like that each and every embargo comes to us, but I don't want each and every permit to come to us. Mm -hmm. And I, I think there should be a fee charged for the permit. Yeah, see, I disagree yeah. with that, but that's something that the board can vote on and make a decision on. Yeah, I would think, like, come with a recommendation or your thoughts on it or why or why not or so we can consider and You should be able to get something on the agenda next week or so, I mean, so you're in place. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we have a draft permit itself, like the form already completed. And along, along with that, I want to see the procedure that you're going to do to embargo that road, like contact the people, sign each and things like that. You know, simple. And that way the board's got something they know what to prove we can move on. Okay. That work. Any comments, Chris? Um, no, I, I, I would agree that, you know, I, I like embargoes coming, but I don't want permits coming to us. Um, yeah. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 10 is for closed session, we have a resolution that pursuant to provisions of the Iowa Open Meetings Law, the Blackhawk County Board of Supervisors shall proceed into closed session at about 9-11 a.m. with an attorney to discuss strategy with counsel and matters of potential litigation pursuant to Iowa Code 21.5, paragraph 1C. So move. Second. Roll call vote. <clears throat> Mr. Little? Yes. <clears throat> Ms. Leyland? Yes. Mr. Schwartz? Yes. Mr. Traka? Yes. We are in closed session. Roy, can you get us ready? You know what you're doing? Takes All right. We will now entertain a motion to adjourn the Board of Supervisors Move. meeting closed Second. session. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. I make a motion we table resolution C to a further date. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right. Uh, any reports or information from the board? You might have to. Do we have to? Roll? Chris? Oh. I'm just having a, a great conference here at the, the NACO Legislative Conference. I look forward to uh, sharing all the information with you all when I get back. Uh, my next thing I'm heading to is a, a hearing on Capitol Hill on the uh, federal Medicaid um, exclusion for, for county um, jail inmates. And, of course, we're, we're aware of how, how that affects us and how that relates to recidivism and everything. And so mm. really excited to bring that information back. Iowa and to talk to our federal legislators about that this afternoon. Excellent. Linda? No, nothing today. Tom? I've got something very brief. Uh, when I, and I, I'm not saying I support this, but this, a retired Waterloo firefighter brought this up with me. Yesterday I had a meeting where two individuals brought it up. One was a retired Cedar Falls firefighter. Uh, the other was a current Waterloo firefighter who's associated with the volunteers in LaPorte City. And I said I would publicly break the ice on this. I would research it. Again, I'm not saying I'm in favor of this, but I'm willing to delve into it. Uh, but I want people to contact me, and that is a Metro Fire Department uh, discussion of it. I'm not saying to make it happen. I'm not saying I support it because uh, the, the point I made at this meeting with volunteer firefighters was I think there, it needs, if it's a discussion we're going to have, each individual community needs to maintain their identity with their chosen firefighters, whether they're volunteer, part-time, paid on call, full-time like Waterloo, that's important. Uh, what's important for me and as a representative of the county board is a cost effective and what's also important is it going to enhance our current services so those are the issues that i think are important and i'm big on the cost effectiveness uh, being fiscally responsible uh, and then how do we pay for it uh, does the county even have an interest in this matter. I say we do because we're at, we have the ability to tax for such an entity. Uh, 
you know, my initial thoughts are not having everybody as county employees, but having what we currently have under a unified command and we somehow enhance our services. The one thing that concerns me right now as a county board supervisor is ambulance services in the rural areas of our county. I know sometimes it's difficult to get personnel on those ambulances, and as a county board supervisor, I've continually been asking myself, how do we make it better? How do we make it better? Because we're such a transient county. My family likes to go on machine. If they're in a critical, if they're in a bad crash in the county, I want them to have the services. We've got very, very dedicated volunteers on our ambulances right now. How can we enhance that? So I'm breaking the ice. Uh, I want people to contact me. They can call me at my county office number, 319-833-3077. Or they can email me at my county email address. They can approach me in public. I'm out quite often. They can contact me on Facebook. I just want people's input. I want to hear from the people we represent. There, I've done it. I broke the ice, and I want to hear from the people. Just remember, you got by Iowa Code, Township Trustees, and they're the ones that um, set up the fire protection for their township. Yep. So you got another piece of the puzzle that's in there. A lot of dynamics, a lot of complications, but uh, it's probably a good conversation at this point in time. That sounds like a good conversation to have. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Oppose, same sign. Hey, you All right. Bye, everyone. Goodbye.